Going to the hospital is scary as it is, but what if I told you there was once a nurse who purposefully terminated his patients and made it look like they passed away on their own? You'd be freaked, right? Well, get ready because that's not a what if, it's a true story. So this guy named Charles was a hospital nurse who admitted to executing at least 40 patients over the course of his career. Some say he's actually knocked out at least 400. Charles Cullen was born in New Jersey to a big Catholic family. His dad was a bus driver and his mom stayed at home to raise Charles and his seven older siblings. Yes, they legit had eight kids. Y'all, I can't imagine trying to hire a babysitter for those kids. <laughs> I'm from a family of two and finding a babysitter for us was already a nightmare. So Charles lived in a pretty full house, but he pretty much grew up without a dad because his passed away when he was just seven months. As a kid, Charles was constantly bullied by his classmates and one of his sister's boyfriends. He was already showing signs of mental instability and described his childhood as miserable. When he was nine years old, Charles tried to end it all by drinking chemicals that he had taken from a chemistry set. But that was just the beginning of his attempts because over the course of his life, he allegedly tried to take his life over 20 times. In one of his attempts, he actually had to be rushed to the hospital for an emergency surgery that saved his life. And after these doctors and nurses saved his life, you'd think he tried to pay it forward in his career as a nurse. But instead, he did the exact opposite. We'll get to that in a second. At age 17, Charles' mom passed away in a car accident. He was so devastated that he dropped out of high school and went into the military. He enlisted in the Navy and made his way up the ranks pretty quickly. But even though he passed the extensive physical and psychological tests required for the Navy submarine crews, Charles started to display signs of mental illness. One time, his supervisor walked in on him seated at a submarine's missile controls wearing scrubs, gloves, and a surgical mask instead of his uniform. That's strange. Maybe he didn't vibe with his uniform and was more of a fan of the whole medical look. Also, scrub seems like super comfy. So Charles never explained why he chose to wear that outfit and pretended to be a doctor, but after the incident, he was moved to a lower pressure position. Over the course of his service in the Navy, Charles was sent to the psychiatric ward a handful of times for trying to end his life and experiencing spouts of irrational thinking. In 1984, when Charles was in his mid-20s, he was medically discharged from the military. We never find out why, but I'm guessing it was his iffy mental state and the weird doctor obsession. After leaving the Navy, Charles fed into his medical fetish and went to nursing school. He married a woman named Adrian, and they had two daughters together. Charles' first job as a nurse was at St. Barnabas Medical Center in New Jersey. This place was also where Charles began his slaying spree. In June of 1988, a man came into the hospital for an allergic reaction. Instead of trying to save his life, Cullen took it by giving the guy a terminal dose of IV medication. And at the time, no one had any idea that Charles was responsible because they all assumed he was doing his job. Over the course of his time at St. Barnabas Medical Center, Charles apparently wiped out at least 11 of his patients, including someone with AIDS who Charles gave too much insulin to. In 1992, six years after Charles started at the hospital, his supervisors started to get suspicious. They believed Charles was messing with IV fluid, which he was doing. Charles got freaked out by the close call, so he left that hospital and got a job at another one in New Jersey. In February of 1992, three elderly women came into the hospital for various problems. They were under Charles's care, but I don't know if care is really the right word to describe it because what he did was terrible. So the dude stole bags of digoxin, which is a medicine typically used to treat heart patients. He gave a fatal dose of the digoxin to these three women, even though none of them had heart issues. The medicine caused them all to pass away. But before the third victim took her last breath, she literally told the other staff and some of her family that a sneaky male nurse gave her an injection while she was sleeping. At the time, everyone brushed off this remark as the woman was pretty old, and people tend to say some crazy things when they're about to kick the bucket. Charles also wasn't even the nurse on her case. I don't care how cuckoo these people thought this woman was, they definitely should have investigated the situation a bit more. Like, why would she choose that allegation as her last few words if she didn't mean it? And the hospital wasn't the only place where Charles was getting violent because his wife, Adrian, reported him twice for domestic violence before filing for a divorce in January of 1993. Adrian was sick of Charles' BS, so she left him. 
But when she did, she must have already been on to Charles' giving the wrong meds to patients thing, because right around the time of her divorce, she had a surgery scheduled at Warren Hospital, which is where her soon-to-be ex-husband worked. She expedited the divorce papers and served them to him at the hospital on the day of her surgery. She specifically requested for Charles to stay far away from her at the hospital, and it's a good thing she did because that could have been the end for her if she hadn't. Once the divorce went through, Charles moved into a basement apartment and was forced to pay child support. Charles was super pissed about the whole thing and spiraled out of control. He started stalking a woman who was a nurse at Warren Hospital. They first met when Charles was admitted to the hospital for one of his many attempts to take his own life. The woman was his nurse, so obviously she was nice to Charles, but he read into it too much because after that, he started leaving her gifts at work and professed his love to her. But this woman actually had a boyfriend who called Charles to threaten him. Charles thought this nurse may have been in a toxic relationship with her boyfriend and needed to be protected from him. Um, I think this woman is capable of making those decisions for herself. Charles started driving to her house, calling her phone like crazy. That is so creepy. Like that is some night stalker type <laughs> The woman called Charles, told him she thought someone broke in and asked him if he knew anything. That's when he told her it was him. I can't believe he successfully busted in, watched her sleep, and then left without her knowing anything. It makes me wonder what happens at my place when I go to sleep. After Charles confessed, he quickly got a call from the police who demanded he turn himself in. So he popped a bunch of pills and went to the station. Yeah, I wasn't joking when I said he kept trying to end his life. Charles got super messed up in the meds, but he was quickly released and received a one-year probation sentence. After he got out, Charles was still tripping on those pills he took, so he had to call up his kid's babysitter to take him to the hospital. That's so embarrassing. He had to call the babysitter to come pick him up. Get it together, bro. After the incident, Charles tried to overdose a few more times and even went to two different psychiatric facilities for his depression. So his bosses somehow let him come back to work after all of this, where he continued icing out patients. In September of 1993, a 91-year-old woman with cancer made allegations that Charles, who was not her nurse, came in and injected her with something in the middle of the night. The staff thought the woman's alleged injection site was just a mosquito bite, but when she passed away the next morning, they realized she might have been telling the truth. What is it with these patients making very scary claims and not being taken seriously? It's like, the staff is just letting him get away with these crimes right in front of their eyes. Well, in this instant with the cancer patient, her son was actually in the room. The son said an expressionless male came in and asked him to step out of the room for a moment. At the time, he thought it was protocol, but later he realized that wasn't the case. The hospital finally got serious about the whole thing and set up a bunch of their nurses to a polygraph test. Charles was tested and interviewed and somehow passed the whole thing. Later that year, Charles moved to another hospital where he worked in the ICU. There, Charles later admitted to slaying five patients by pumping them full of digoxin. After that, he was moved to another hospital, but he was fired for poor performance. Finally, one of these hospitals fires this dude. I can't believe how long it took for that to happen. I wonder what it was like for Charles to be fired for the first time. I bet he was so I quit a job once because of someone who should have been fired, and I was pretty mad about that. So once Charles got let go from the hospital, he was obviously out of money and stopped paying child support. He went back to a psychiatric ward for his depression, but that didn't really help his mental state because his neighbors reported some odd behavior from Charles after he was released. They said he would shout at no one and would even make super strange faces when he thought people weren't looking. In February of 1998, Charles made the move from New Jersey to Pennsylvania. Around this time, he had also filed for bankruptcy and claimed over $60,000 in debt. But he ended up securing a job at a nursing home and continued taking out patients. In one particular case, Charles was taking care of someone with a broken neck when he loaded up the patient with insulin, which sent them into violent seizures. Yeah, last time I checked, insulin has absolutely nothing to do with a neck injury. At this point, the staff knew something was up and they conducted an internal investigation. The supervisors on the investigation somehow pointed fingers at an innocent woman who was another nurse at the facility. This woman ended up getting fired and her lawyers actually claimed they believed Charles was responsible for the crime, which the hospital just brushed off. Charles went on to work at a bunch of other medical facilities and hospitals where he kept taking out patients left and right. At this point, you're probably thinking, why were all these people hiring this man who's clearly off his rocker? Well, 
Charles had several letters of recommendations and good reviews from his many employers. He was also down to work nights and holidays, which were the shifts that need filling. And there was a shortage of nurses, so these hospitals were just looking for people who could help look after patients. In June 2002, one of Charles' co-workers found a bunch of suspicious medicine vials in the waste bin. A group of nurses began monitoring the medicine room, and once they had enough proof that Charles was tampering with the hospital meds, they ratted him out. Once the word made it up the hospital's chain of command, Charles was presented with an ultimatum, that he either resign and be given a neutral recommendation or be fired with a bad recommendation. Obviously, he went with the first option and left that day. But it didn't take long for Charles to find another job where he could prey on innocent patients. This time, it was at a place back in New Jersey called Somerset Hospital. Is this dude not tired of going through the onboarding process with all of these jobs? Those papers are literally the worst to fill out. At this new job in New Jersey, Charles wiped out at least 13 patients in less than a year. Y'all. This dude needs to get caught. I can't get over how many people are getting wrongfully terminated by this dude. In the summer of 2003, the hospital's computer systems showed that Cullen was checking out patients' records that weren't his. He was sneaking into their rooms and Somerset even found out that he was requesting a bunch of medications the patients didn't need. While well, someone from the New Jersey Poison Information and Education System caught a whiff of all the suspicious meds being administered and warned Somerset that there were at least four strange overdoses at their facility that they thought were caused by one of the employees. But the hospital didn't do anything until a few months later. In October 2003, Somerset alerted state authorities about Charles' suspicious behavior. Shortly thereafter, he was fired for lying on his job application, but the police continued Charles' investigation. Officials worked with one of Charles' co-workers and friends named Amy, who was sent out as a spy one night Amy met up with Charles at a restaurant where she was wired up to a mic. She told Charles that she knew he was responsible for the medication-induced slayings and told him to turn himself in. To that, he said, I'm not going down without a fight. Bro, Charles, you've caused enough damage. Just give up. Well, from his response, officials were able to arrest him, but they didn't have enough evidence on him yet. Investigators brought Amy in again. She set up Charles by saying the investigators were looking at her as the suspect, which he got mad over, so he finally admitted. At first, Charles only admitted to one legal termination and one attempted termination, but a few days later, his number of victims skyrocketed. Eventually, Charles confessed to having slain 40 patients over the course of his nursing career. Like 40 human beings with lives and families and big dreams of their own. Officials were only able to tie Charles to 13 of his slayings, in addition to two attempted ones. In order to avoid an execution sentence of his own, Charles pled not guilty and agreed to work with the authorities to identify all his victims, to fill in some holes and bring the patient's families more closure. When asked why did he do all of this, Charles claimed he only gave meds to the patients to save them from coding or going into cardiac or respiratory arrest. He said that he wanted to end the patient's suffering and prevent the hospital from dehumanizing them. Um, I feel like slaying someone is the epitome of dehumanizing them. Charles ended up getting 11 consecutive life sentences and is not eligible for parole until 2403. Charles is still serving out his sentence in a New Jersey prison, which is where he will be for the rest of his life. Since his terrible acts, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and 35 other states created new laws to help prevent the same thing from happening again. Y'all, I hope that never happens again because I'm sure I'll have to go to the doctor sometime in the future and I'd like to survive my visit. It's so terrible what happened to all of these innocent patients, and it's even more terrible. We don't know the exact amount of people Charles preyed on in the end. I hope the victims' families are able to get some closure knowing this man is locked up to never go after anyone else. After all this, I know that going to the hospital may be scary, but what's not scary are these cauliflower tacos. Stay safe out there and keep an eye out for crazy nurses and cat-chasing men.